Now, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the modern man. Now, most people uh, have this perception that men are better off today. I mean, for example, there's more discussion about men's mental health. There's uh, Are You OK Day, uh, Beyond Blue, that was you know founded with men's mental health in mind. Then there's the Movember uh, promotion, and also men are encouraged to open up more with their, you know, feelings, you know, not uh, uh, bottle it all up. Um, uh, what's your perception or response when um, uh, that type of analysis is put to you? Um, it's an interesting question. I, I think probably men are, will work better off in the 1950s in actual fact. I mean, I think men are in a terrible place at the moment. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. The one, one area which, where I would make an exception in terms of this expressing their feelings and, and not being in lock, as locked into the sort of masculine role that denied them true intimacy with their, in their relationships, particularly with their children. I mean, that has been a big plus, no question. Um, but that is a two-edged sword. I mean, it really bothers me that men, as never before, are encouraged to embrace fatherhood and to see that as a hugely important thing, which it is. It's the most wonderful thing. And yet it's never been so vulnerable. I mean, men can take on the role of fathers and find it the most rewarding thing in their lives. And then two months, six months, two years later, have the rug pulled out from under them where the, where the part, their partner, their wife decides she doesn't want to be in the relationship anymore and they have to fight to the, see their children. And that is a tragedy of epic proportions. And it's across our society. And I suppose I was, that's what's got me into this whole business of men's rights. Um, probably for the last 30 years, I've been battling on the issue of how unfair it is that children are deprived of their fathers and what a, tra you know, that, that's that been a really destructive thing for our society. Um, but overall, I think in many ways, men had it better in previous generations when they were given respect for what they did. Men are doing the same jobs as they've always done, working as hard, if not harder than they've always done. But there used to be this quaint notion that the women would be grateful, the women would give thanks to them for that. Oh, here comes dad. I mean, we should all be good to dad because he's had a hard day at the office. Let's look after him. You know, this notion that he was the sort of conquering hero because he'd worked hard for them. Men are still doing that. But now they just get constant criticism. They get no thanks whatsoever. They get totally told that she works twice as hard as they do anyway. I mean, I think... Marriage for men is really a mugs game and a very risky prospect, and as are most live-in live relationships. And yet, of course, men, I think lots of men, love having a, a wife, a partner, someone in their lives that they commit themselves to. Um, and the happiest men are men are in happy marriages, but that's, whoa, is that winning the lotto. Uh, I think one of the um, disadvantages we've seen uh, for men in this modern age is that there's this uh, new suspicion of, of them, especially around children that, uh, I mean, I've seen probably uh, op had you know, every couple of months saying, you know, men should not be uh, left alone uh, with uh, children. And there's uh, a lot of men who say that they don't become, you know, teachers or childcare workers because, you know, they're, uh, they're worried they'll be accused of, you know, being uh, predatory. Uh, and that's something that I think, you know, modern men uh, have really uh, suffered with. Oh, yeah, absolutely, the issue around children. And that's been, you know, that's a shocking thing, that we are systematically driving men out of education and out of working with children in any capacity. Um, no man in his right mind would want to be with a, a classroom of five-year-olds. Uh, it's just too risky for him. Um, you know, whether, whatever it is, nursing, a whole range of occupations are, are really dangerous for men because they can so easily get accused of, you know, inappropriate behaviour towards children, but also inappropriate behaviour towards women. I mean, this latest Me Too, hashtag Me Too campaign is showing up women's vindictiveness and stupidity as nothing we have ever seen before. 
And what is becoming patently obvious is that men should avoid working with women because they're not to be trusted. Because they can be accused of telling a joke, making an inappropriate remark, looking at a woman in the wrong way 20 years later and having their career ruined. And I mean, gee, if, how stupid are women? Here we fought for the right to get into the workplace alongside men. And now we're just blowing it all sky high. But teach, by teaching men, they're nuts to work. If they have a choice between employing a man and a woman, they, if they have any sense whatsoever, they should choose the man now. And I'm also curious about, obviously, with the age of the internet, we've seen the explosion uh, of the availability of uh, pornography, which is mainly consumed by uh, men. Has that uh, damaged uh, relationships between, or sexual relationships between men and women? Um, well, it, it needn't do so, but of course, within the feminist movement, with, you know, the women are working really hard to use that as a weapon against men. There's always been pornography. If you go back to the cavemen, there was, you know, there were always, men have always liked images of sexual images of women. Cul one, you know, cultures across the world have some erotic component, uh, visual component that has been particularly enjoyed by men, stick figures or the Victorians used to have play guards or I, I, I did a lot of work, I did a work, uh, a um, research project on looking at male and female differences in sexual desire a few years ago and talked to a lot of men about these issues and one man said to me he used to leaf on the Sunday paper in the hope that it would have a Kmart catalogue in there so he could look at women in underwear. I mean this is, we know this, men like looking at sexy bodies, men like looking at sexy images, women are more likely to want to have something that has a plot, you know, the, the Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, the, our erotic imagination, if we even have one, um, is is very different from the men's. And so what do we have? Of course, we have women saying that men's erotica, men's pornography is bad, wicked, you know, addictive, dangerous, turning them into sex crave monsters, whereas, you know, what we do, of course, is perfect. And I mean, look at when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. There were therapists across the world saying, oh, no, 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 women, don't, that doesn't mean women are interested in being tied up and whipped. You know, women have a capacity to differentiate between real life and fantasy, and this is just fantasy. And But, of course, that doesn't apply to men, does it? Men, you know, assume that when they look at images of, you know, unrealistic images of busty blondes and so on. That's what they want. They're denigrating women and, 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 and that's influencing the way they think about women. It's just nuts. We have had generations of women, now, of young men now exposed to internet porn, my sons included and all their friends who are all to totally normal young men who treat women with great respect. It hasn't perverted their relationships. It hasn't turned them into sex crazed monsters. But, you know, the woe betide the, the man who's caught late at night looking at it, you know, she thinks he's looking at his computer and he's actually looking at something sexy because that could just blow up the way we're talking about it now. Uh, pornography is one of the areas where it's just full of misinformation and anti-male propaganda. And I mean, given going back to my sex therapy um, background, one of the things that really bothers me is what's coming out in in that area and in the Me Too campaigns is an anti-sex campaign driven by women because one of the big problems we have, which I've been writing about a lot over the years, is a growing gap between men and women in terms of sexual desire. All the research is showing that men are much more likely to maintain their interest in sex in long-term relationships than women are. Lots and lots of women go off sex. It's just not interesting to them. And so we have a hell of a lot of women out there who are essentially anti-sex, who hate the fact that men continue to have this lovely, rampant, exuberant sexual drive and are doing their best to denigrate that and repress it. And, you know, 
be buggered if I'm not going to get out there and fight that. I mean, I was fighting the anti-sex conservatives 40 years ago, and now it's the left wing, the feminists, who are leading this charge to label male sexuality as a perverted thing. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.